interesting to look up player efficiency rating and I've been talking about this with some of my students and it's one of those stats in the NBA it's considered an advanced stat and people use it to sort of sort of gauge who, who the best players the best basketball players are okay so one of the reasons I was so interested in talking about it is because when you first look at it um, it can be quite daunting see it looks like this mess of formula that <clears throat> only like a real professional mathematician or something can work out. Um, and, and then it simplifies to something like this, which doesn't look any simpler. And then there's all these really complicated looking things. And that's only for the unadjusted PER. Oops. That's only for the unadjusted PER with the U here. When you make the player efficiency rating, you have to times it by these things. And so on the face of it, it looks like it's inaccessible. But what I want to do is break it down for you so that, so you might not be able to actually perform the calculation by hand, but at least you'll know sort of what it means and you'll, you'll understand it to the point where like <clears throat> you can actually know how your plays in the game affect your PER, okay? So first of all, what this looks like, the whole thing is in these brackets here, this one curly brackets, and this other brackets, okay? And whatever it is, it's divided by the number of minutes. <clears throat> so that makes sense because <clears throat> it's trying to say that if you do the same thing with more minutes, you're you're not as efficient as if you did the same thing with less minutes. Okay, so if you could get the same job done in less time, um, that's better. Okay, and you know minutes are not necessarily the true measure of time in basketball. It's more the possessions, and so this this is probably what the adjustment is for the adjustment of the PER, this league pace of a team pace thing. But we don't even have to get into that right now. Okay, now let's look inside what, what's inside the brackets, okay? So, so 3P is the number of three-point field goals made <clears throat> by the player. <clears throat> this, I'm assuming, is the number of assists the player makes. This is, I'm assuming, the number of field goals the player makes. This is the number of free throws the player makes. This is the number of turnovers. This is the number of, um, or well, maybe it's not so clear what that is right now. And there's some other things which are not so clear. This is um, some offensive rebounds here. <clears throat> you have steals, blocks, personal fouls. So can you see that basically what this takes in, it takes into account your box score stats. So you're, you're basically your points, assists, rebounds, turnovers, steals, blocks, free throws and stuff. And basically it adds something every time it's a good thing. See how it's plus three points, plus assists, plus field goals, plus free throws. So it'll add something every time something good happens and it subtracts it every time something bad happens. So the turnover, so you subtract something for turnovers. Um, <clears throat> so this is something bad, we'll have to figure out what that means. Um, see, you get something for offensive rebounds and you subtract, and you get something for steals and then you get something for blocks but you subtract for fouls because it's, it's generally not good to foul. Okay, so if you break it down like that, um, it's much simpler, and then it becomes just a matter of how each of those things is valued relative to everything else, right? So here you have to be maybe a little bit careful, but <clears throat> so if you look at it from face value, okay, it looks like three-point field goals are made count as one, okay, and it looks like assists count as two-thirds 
But it's not necessarily the case because we have this complication where field goals field goals actually um, take into account your three point and two point field goals. Okay. <clears throat> so let's let's <clears throat> let's ignore this complicating factor right now to try to explain what's going on. So we don't care about factor times team assist over team field goals. We just care about two times field goals. <clears throat> so <clears throat> that seems to be two seems to come from the fact that most field goals are worth two points, right? <clears throat> but then you have those three points that are that these are only counted as two points. So that seems to be why you would add this three point field goal thing separately for that extra one point. So what it essentially is is you get one basic contribution to PR for every point you have. Okay? So so an assist is not worth two thirds of a three point field goal, which is actually a two point bucket. It's worth two thirds of a of a point. Okay, so in other words, three assists roughly counts as one two point basket in this calculation. Okay. So you're basically getting one contribution for a point and you get two thirds of a point per assist. That's what that is. So that's an interesting thing. I don't think it's justified why that it's worth two thirds. Maybe people just feel like it is, or maybe there's a good reason. We'd have to investigate that further. Okay. And now let's look at this factor. <clears throat> so I won't tell you, I don't know exactly what the factor is, but I can have a guess sort of as to what it might try to represent. Okay. <clears throat> See, because um, a player scoring two points per field goal might not necessarily be doing it completely on their own, right? The team might be passing them the ball or being, though the team might be so strong it creates these situations. So it looks like you might not get the full two points. You might have to minus some factor that's related to how many assists that your team gives out on field goals. Okay, so it's kind of, if you are unassisted every time, or your team just doesn't have assists, then it should be worth two. And if you're assisted all the time, it might be worth um, quite a bit less than two. Um, and we'd have to unravel this to see exactly what it's worth. But I can't imagine it'd be worth that much less than two, because the assist itself is only worth two thirds of a point. Okay, so maybe maybe it is just worth sort of that ratio. Okay, so. That's pretty straightforward. Okay, now we have some, we have basically the right idea. I think a good idea to basically analyze a lot of these things. See, like free throws, you get one point every time you make a free throw, right? So that's where this two times half is one comes from. And then I suppose you'd also want to subtract because your free throws don't necessarily are unassisted either, right? Because someone could assist you to score, but in that same play, you could get fouled, right? So you, then you have these assisted free throws which you would, might subtract something to account for it. Okay. Okay, now we look at some negative stats. So turnovers are, are usually bad. <clears throat> Though they're not always bad um, in, in, uh, when, when they're compared, combined with assists. Okay, so obviously someone with a lot of assists is bound to have some turnovers. And if you don't have any turnovers, it may, it may mean you're a bit too cautious on your passes, especially for the ones that could lead to really easy baskets. Anyway, so VOP uh, stands for value of possession, and I think it seems to be a, a sort of an average, sim it's a simplification of the value of possession for the whole competition. So in the NBA, it might be worth, say, one point. Okay. So it kind of makes sense that when you turn the ball over, you lose the value of what the possession had, right? So that's a simplification. If you, on average, your possession is worth one point, you lose a point every time you turn it over. You know, like not on average, you know, your possession could already be not worth anything because you're in the bottom of the shot clock or something like that. Um, but, you know, on average, hopefully it'll be roughly this and again I don't think any of this formula is really justified it just seems to be um, a simple way to try to measure someone's overall performance 
Okay, now we have this interesting thing where we didn't figure out before. So maybe we could look at it more closely. We'll see what that is. Okay, so this is the field goal attempts minus the field goals made. So that's that seems to be the, the field goals missed, right? And it's a minus. So it's a bad thing to miss field goals, of course. But how bad is it? Well, what they're trying to say is you would only... It's kind of like a turnover. Um, but it's only a turnover, see, because you lose the value of possession like a turnover, right? But it's only like a turnover if... Um, so this is called defensive rebound percentage. I think it's also some sort of league average. Um competition average stat so it's only worth a turnover if the the other team rebounds it okay so if they're rebounding at 80% this is 80% of a turnover a missed shot that's what it's saying okay so it makes a little bit of sense maybe it needs to be more justified but on this level it really makes you feel like you understand what the design of this is so 0.44 plus 0.44 plus 0.56, not really sure what this is, oh, okay, here there's free throws attempts minus free throws made, so that's the free throws missed, right, so the reason these are bad is because you miss, you miss shots and miss free throws, you don't, you don't get that possession back, you know, like these have costs, so free throws are not truly free unless it's like an and one, um, so there's really a cost to missing these free throws, because you can't take them again, and you don't get that possession back. So when you miss a free throw, okay, it's not the same as a turnover, okay, because they'll have to rebound it as well, and the points is not the whole value of the possession because you yeah, you you have the free throw split up, okay, so I'm not going to get into really what this means exactly, and I um. Is kind of a little bit beyond the point of this right now so let's just keep going and we basically have the rough idea that free throws missed contribute negatively and they contribute about so this is about um, half of you know, this is 80 percent this is 0.4.8 so it's about 0.4 of a value of a possession for every free throw missed and then this one, see, total rebounds minus offensive rebounds. That's just defensive rebound, right? So if you <clears throat> if you get a defensive rebound, that's a good thing. It's plus. But how good is it? Well, you don't just get the value of possession for the defensive rebound. You only get um, your the the excess over the the average defensive rebounding percentage. So if you're expected to get eighty percent of the rebounds or 80% of that rebound anyway, when you get it, you only get credit for 0.2 of it. Okay, that's what that's saying. And whether that makes sense or not, I guess we're not really going into it too deeply, but this is just to sort of have a good idea of what all these things are doing. Offensive rebounds, when you get that, um, basically I feel like it's timesing by defensive rebound percentage because you're taking away their defensive rebound, right? So that's worth whatever they were entitled to, like 80% of a rebound, and obviously the value of the possession back. Okay? Again, steals are good, and steals, you don't rely on any rebounds. Once you got the steal, you have possession. So you took away their value of possession and gave it to yourself, so that's plus value of possession. And blocks, well, it's the same kind of thing, right? <clears throat> blocks are like a steal, but you're not guaranteed the ball unless you actually get the rebound too. So that's why it's a defensive rebound percentage right there. And then there's this complicated looking thing with personal fouls. So fouls are obviously bad, but but fouls are not necessarily bad in all situations because um, kind of like hack and shack fouls can be good. Um, and so it depends on how often people are expected to make their free throws. See, there's free throws. So, to work out exactly what the contribution is, you might have to look up these stats, but roughly the fouls are only as bad as 
how good other players make their free throws on average, uh, according to this stat. It's not individual basis. It's always league average. Okay, so once you've got all that, you go down here. So I guess this is what accounts for minutes into possessions. The pace is the possessions per game or something like that. And then there's some sort of normalizing to make 15 a, 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 an average PER for your league or something like that. But as you can see, it's not that important sort of what each of the individual numbers is more important sort of to understand how <clears throat> your stats contribute to your PER and, you know, and to basically not get too intimidated by lots of expressions. It's really a very um, simple meaning thing. And, you know, when it simplifies, it looks like that, which now becomes sort of meaningless, okay? Because it doesn't have the intention there, but it may be easier to do calculations because you don't have the repeated field goals thing repeated so many times. It would just simplify out. You'd collect the like terms, and this would become a bit more maths. Okay, I hope that um, you gained something out of that. Um, if you're interested, please... Tell me that you are, and I'll do more things like this. So I do find this is very interesting and um, educational. Okay, because it's something that looks very uh, daunting, but it's in fact rather simple.